This just in from winetext.com. Possibly the finest vintage I've ever tasted to date, and I've had them all. The 2010 QED is a beauty from 2010 Raza Vineyards. Comprised of 79% Syrah, 9% Morverdre, 8% Grenache, and 4% Viognier, it boasts knockout aromas of red and black fruits, sappy herbs, roasted meats, and licorice to go with a medium to full-bodied, elegant, and seamless mouthfeel that keeps you coming back to the glass. Gaining a beautiful floral undertone with its air, it is a classy effort that will impress for 10 to 12 years. Drink now to 2022. Release price $50, but on winetext.com. <laughs> uh. So if you like to get wine, totally not sponsored by winetext.com, but they do actually have some good deals. And it interrupted me from talking about this new Hustler chassis that I'm going to have some fun with. So today, that's what I'm going to talk about. So, as I may have talked about before, I'm into classic crawlers because I have some classic crawlers and I've been doing this for quite a while now. 18 years or so, I guess, really doesn't matter. But I have seen a lot of chassis along the way, a lot of rigs come out, and today there are just so many. So many new rigs to choose from. It is incredible. And one of my favorites has always been the Hustler. So this is what back in the day a Hustler would look like. And a lot of people use Clodbuster axles. This one has the XTM, I believe. These were uh, XTM axles that came out. Um, but it's a super class crawler. So 3.2 inch rims. Let me make sure it's been so long. Oh my God. Uh, 3.2 inch rims, essentially like Emacs, the old Emacs size rims, and a, if I remember correctly, an 18 and a half inch wheelbase, I believe is what our limit ended up settling on. Uh, big rigs, the battery goes in here. A lot of these were run with droop only suspension. This one looks like it's half droop, half uh, sprung suspension. And they get over very big objects. They're uh, four wheel steer. This one has problems with it that needs to be fixed of course. So I bought this chassis so that I could do some custom projects with it. But I really love these guys because I do have an original that was welded up in Colorado. These are solid welded up in China that is a replica of the rig that I have. And mine isn't the only one, but uh, it was welded up by one of the Carnage crew members and it is an original that was uh, let's see, uh, black oxide coated, and then the bottom has a bunch of laser etching on it with the Carnage crew symbol. This one is not. I don't care about hacking this one up. And so I got this rig to hack up. And then I learned that RCP crawlers still had a few Hustler chassis on their website and they were on sale. I don't know if they still have them because I bought a couple of them. And uh, so yeah, you know, here's, here's our sticker sheet, RCP crawlers, rcpcrawlers.com is where you would find this. rcpcrawlers.com. But I saw that they still had some new in package and these guys are heavy. They're solid. Like I said, it's, this is a beefy, beefy ass chassis. I just dented my table. Um, not really worried about making something that's modern out of this. So what am I going to do with this? What is my plan? Um, as you can see, it was developed for motor on axle. That means there is really nothing in the chassis as far as places to put electronics or a transmission. We have this little tray here uh, that the radio essentially went in. We have this little tray here. It's not even a tray, it's a piece of bent metal that your battery would sit on. And of course, there's like a dip underneath the, the battery kind of, you had to like shim it up with some foam or something. Like th these are literally a builder's chassis. There was nothing easy about this custom links and uh, I mean the whole just nine yards of trying to build something around essentially fixed geometry and the geometry on these was never great uh, but this was this was uh shoot 2005 2006 maybe 2007 man I don't remember I have to go back and look on RC crawler I didn't do my research before this but okay back to what my plan is um well first off I got lots of body kits. Thank you for providing extra body panels for me, RCP crawlers. These can be used to replicate more body panels just in case, but otherwise, yes. Oh, it even comes with a screw kit. Thank you, thank you, I do appreciate that. Um, so, what I'm gonna do this guy is I'm gonna convert it into a 
probably a 1.9 scalar scalar <laughs> with a transmission mount in the middle and that means i will need to probably mount another plate there i might completely cut this out i definitely have to cut this out so that our uh, drive shaft will clear unless Ooh. all right well it, does it actually fit uh that may not be an easy way to, that's a problem with these chassis uh is, is just getting things in is a problem oh oh boy all right so this is a too low transmission from team garage hack and it looks like with minimum effort yeah i'll probably have to cut this nose piece out but with minimum effort, I'm going to be able to drop a, uh, a sacrificial skid into it, if you will, and mount a transmission. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to cut this plate out. Maybe, maybe uh, I, I'll have to turn the transmission around because we don't want the rear to be digging and pushing the front. It's like some fancy game of Tetris here. Yeah, yeah, there's no way around it. I'm going to have to cut this nose out. No big deal. That's why I got this extra chassis and this extra chassis and then the other one that's also the same chassis on the shelf. <laughs> if you want to do one of these projects yourself, uh, like I said before, rcbcrawlers.com did have them in stock for less than 100 bucks a piece, uh, which for a sweet tube frame is pretty dang inexpensive. If you ask me, I know you didn't ask me, but I'm telling you, if you're looking for just a really cool old classic project, these are going to be pretty sweet. Now, what I would like to do is actually give myself more mounting options for the links. And to do that, I would probably like to go to modern geometry. I will use a modern skid plate like the one found on the Team Garage Hack. As you can see, instead of the lower links being wide, the lower link pockets are narrow, both front and back. Uh, not only does this make the roll center really nice, this actually gives the anti-squat a good position and creates less places for you to hang up as you're, you know, going over the rocks. That kind of stuff. So that's what I'm going to go for. Is I'm, I'm probably just going to cut out the entire base of this chassis. Um, I'll probably weld on some, some side plates or something like that, get some modern suspension geometry, get some modern upper links. That's the big deal, really, is modern upper link positions. Our fronts are going to be way down here, and our rears are probably going to be up in here somewhere. Now, the heft of the chassis is going to change our anti-squat, so you know this is, uh, this is a long-term goal. I've got a lot of projects going. I don't know when I'm going to get back to this one because I have another one I want to do first. And then another one I want to do after that before I get to this. But at any rate, you know, it's, uh, it's Christmas time. And I just wanted to buy myself the gift of a new project that can sit on the shelf for 10 years if I want to. And this chassis is not going to go bad. It's going to be there waiting for me. So, yeah. Uh, man, what axles would I use with this, though? That's the only thing that I don't know yet. Capra axles is, is what I, I kind of want to use. But maybe some 10 three axles let me know in the comments what you would use on something like this whether it be a 2.2 or a 1.9 conversion i i want something more modern something i can get parts for and as much as i want to be like yeah tlt axles all the way uh, i got plenty of parts to build them up with tlts and that would be incredibly hilarious actually uh i want to put normal modern big power to it as well so probably not going to go with a tlt axle route yep but Give me a little bit of help in the comments on this. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what I want to do on it yet, so I need, I need a little bit of input. But I do think that that is enough talking about this project for today, and I will just, uh, you know, I'll pull it out in the future, uh, get it on the bandsaw and section some pieces out and see what I can do to get at least a transmission into the belly, because that's going to be step one. That is the hardest part. And once we get that, then the rest can just bolt up. So easy peasy, kind of, whatever. As always, I do appreciate you tuning in. Hope you're having a good day. Have a good one.